Maybe it's about finding the little things that get you through the day. Whether it's the support of someone close to you, or letting yourself feel overwhelmed. <laughs> if only for a moment. This video will be a little less analytical and in-depth than my videos usually are, but for a good reason I think will kind of underpin my argument about the show Scrubs. I adore the show, despite the fact I haven't technically watched it in years. A friend of mine introduced it to me when I was about 15 and then I regularly binged it, probably for the next 6 or so years because for a long time it was my go-to show to stick on when I felt down or tired. But while Scrubs is a widely loved and highly rated show, I also think there's many who would underestimate its beauty, precisely because of the type of show it is. So let me put it this way. There are many comedies a lot of people would argue make them laugh out loud more often than Scrubs does, and I'd say the same. Shows like IT Crowd or Faulty Towers craft insane plot lines with bizarre situations of increasing catastrophes getting more and more out of hand, all for the sake of comedy. Whereas Scrubs, kind of bizarre in many circumstances, still keeps things largely calm and contained and holds a level of believability. Most of the absurdity takes place solely in JD's daydreaming. Holy inferiority complex, Batman! How low is my self esteem that I'm the sidekick in my own fantasy? And so, whilst characters do crazy stuff and act in strange ways at times, yes, we still do believe that the hospital, Sacred Heart, functions as a proper hospital. JD and Turk may mess around from time to time, but never in ways that puts patients' lives at risk, you know? We still see them doing their jobs effectively. And while stupid things do happen, it all happens around lots of scenes of doctors treating people. Um, in fact, there's probably as many scenes of characters actually doing their jobs properly than you'd get in most dramas, let alone other comedies. Instead of ludicrous disasters, we get what feels like a real hospital just exaggerated slightly. And so that means there is less space and material for as much flat out comedy, yes, but it also does mean we get something that feels a little more real and more relaxed. Come on, think of something. <sighs> Comforting, even. A show that says life can be funny and strange and a little crazy, but the hospital can still function as a hospital. The world still keeps turning like it's supposed to. Nothing ever spirals into chaos. Everything is basically okay. But then what about when it's not okay? Sometimes Scrubs is pretty emotional. One episode especially. <laughs> um, but even beyond that, most episodes tend to have some sense of emotion or important conflict to them. This is the other side of Scrubs, the side that isn't the comedy, but I guess is more of a drama or soap even, not to mean that as a criticism. Um, a long running show with developing plot lines where characters get into relationships with other characters, then break up, get with other people, all of that sort of stuff going on throughout the general development of the show. But just as there are comedies more inherently comedic than Scrubs, there are shows much, much more soap-like too. Soaps tend to play up plots for drama and shocking twists where Scrubs doesn't. It's not people endlessly cheating on each other or getting into fights or long lost partners coming back from the dead or any of that stuff that gives off the message the world is full of people who can't be trusted and don't know how to communicate properly. But Scrubs is nothing like that. It's a show where people do fall in and out of different relationships and have different conflicts and complications, but they're never mass drama. It's just ordinary complications we all come across in ordinary human life. Same as all the ordinary work-related difficulties with patients we get in this show. It's, it's a show that tells us sometimes life is complicated and has difficulties and that that's sad. Again, not as sad as other shows, excepting a few specific episodes. It's not tragedy or dark comedy, but lightly sad. And when the difficulties are more complicated ones, such as the whole plot involving Kim, a woman JD dated and accidentally made pregnant who then got offered a job miles away, which she took um, alongside various other complications, it's all handled, depicted and approached with a great level of maturity. 
And then there's Turk and Carla, two characters who do have a solid, loving relationship throughout the show. We see the simple difficulties there any couple might have. Um, take the episode My Screw Up, where Turk wanting Carla to take his last name when they marry, where she wants to keep her own. They have an ordinary disagreement, the way all couples do from time to time. Carla suggests you'll take his last name only if Turk has the mole on his face removed. They agree on this, but secretly both seem to not want to go through with it, and after Kelso delivers the fitting advice... You might find out that thing you hate so much is the very same thing you miss when it's gone. Carla rushes to get Turk to cancel the mole removal. They reconcile, and Turk accepts her last name. I've picked a deliberately undramatic example there, but I think it highlights the way Scrubs episodes are written. This isn't coming up with the most hilarious and ludicrous scenarios to put characters in and get massive laughs, nor the most dramatic and shocking scenarios to keep the audiences hooked, nor even the bleakest scenarios to break our hearts, but ordinary, sometimes very sad, but also sometimes kind of mundane scenarios. My peeps on the fritz. The plots seem to start with that and then build the comedy around it. And so what that makes for is a show that's incredibly comforting to watch. You know, don't get me wrong, comedies in general are the sort of things you choose to watch after a long day when you're feeling down and need a bit of comfort. However, the more comedic comedies do that by presenting such absurdity that you can't possibly take it seriously and it distracts you from your own life, and the more soap-like ones present you with shocking drama that distracts you from your own life by enveloping you in something much more gripping, Scrubs, however, sits in the middle showcasing many ordinary difficulties you can relate to on a regular basis, reminding you that they can be managed. Even when it's sad, the hospital never falls apart, everything still keeps going, they do gradually work through their struggles. And not in some rosy, picturesque world either, but in the world of a hospital where people do constantly die, where accomplished doctors can fall into depression, or life in general can go very wrong. Even then, Characters endeavour to find a way to manage with great maturity and humanity, and just seeing them attempt to navigate all of this in a show peppered with some good comedy, all of that provides great comfort. So in a nutshell, that's why I love Scrubs. That's why I spent so much of my teenage years watching this show, and why I'd one day like to find a free time to try watching it all again. So let me add an extra final point, because I like the idea of doing that. Um, I recently watched Pop Culture Detective's video, Boys Don't Cry Except When They Do, about the continuing perception in films that men aren't meant to cry except in very particular and select examples, such as extreme trauma with someone's death, or when they're mocking men crying as something pathetic to laugh at. And it's a different point, really, but it did make me think of JD and How Scrubs is a show that came out in 2001, starring a bloke that is far from the masculine stereotype. Every inch of her apartment the apartment was filled with girly stuff, bath salts. It was awesome. The man who shows a great deal of vulnerability, as well as what is traditionally called a feminine side, and it is regularly played for laughs, but not in a way meant to mock this unmanly bloke that we as a society should look down upon the way pop culture detectives video highlights. I thought big people weren't supposed to cry. I think it's sweet that he's crying like a little bitch. Instead, JD is unashamed of this side of himself. Actually, it's not a helmet, it's a hair mat. It has extra room so you don't mess up your hairdo. He orders apple teenies from bars knowing it's not a typically manly drink, knowing people around him might find it strange and quite funny, but he doesn't care, and whilst it is funny to see him singing Toto in the bath, we're laughing with respect more than derision. This side of JD isn't portrayed as pathetic whatsoever, but makes him more likeable and fits into his general goofiness and lovable eccentricity. Okay, fine. Let me just fix my hair. Oh, wait! I don't have to. Even Dr. Cox, who does call JD by girls' names, is never presented as right to do so, but more as overly macho in using girls' names as a way to distance himself from a man he does deep down respect and care for immensely. His use of girls' names are more poking fun about Dr. Cox's emotional barriers than JD's supposedly girly side. And that's just a small point, but it's an interesting one. I imagine some of the show's humour could probably be a little outdated in other ways, but 
JD can have that feminine side and can be very close and emotional with his best friend Turk in a way media would often present as gay, and he can still get the girls. I suspect some of the sheer unashamed confidence JD does have to be himself, often with the comfortability to also laugh at himself, probably adds to his attractiveness for many people. But those are my thoughts, that's all I have to say, I hope you enjoyed this. Like the video if you did like it, subscribe, support me on Patreon if you fancy it, or I'll link my Adventure Time video in the description if that interests you. Um, otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And as ever, a special thank you goes to Devin, Kestrel, Arwen, Stephen Legg, Janice McMahon, Samara Salsi, Sharok of 2814, Joshua C. Follier, Chad Bramwell, and Incomplete Sentience. Thank you.